Hi, so today we're going to learn how to make a circular buffer or delay line uh, in Max MSP with gentler. Now, what what a, a circular buffer is that it's a memory uh, it's a memory allocation scheme where memory is reused when an index writes over a previously used location. Now, this is how delay lines are implemented in DSP. So uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to call up a buffer to the object. And we need to give it a name, so let's say delay, and we need to give it a size, let's say 4,000 milliseconds. Now I, I want to see how this buffer is being filled in, so I'm going to bring up a waveform tilde and give it the attribute buffer name the same as the name that we give our delay, as our buffer, which is delay. Great, so now we can see it being filled in. Now since we're going to do this whole thing in gen tilde, let's bring up a gen tilde. And let's open it so we can edit it. And we are met with the default patch in gen tilde. Great. Since we don't need this, we can delete it. And now what we need to do is the buffer that we declare outside gen tilde, we need to refer to that buffer inside. So we're going to say buffer, give the same name, delay. So now the buffer that we de declared outside is being referred to inside gen. We need to write to this buffer. And the way that we write to a buffer is with poke. And since poke needs to know which buffer to write to, we give it the same argument as delay, which is the name of our buffer. I know that in one is going to be our signal. So we're going to say signal to write. This is going to be going to the first uh, in input of our poke. And now we need to tell where in the buffer to write it. So we need to init, so we need to init, so we need to index this buffer. And the way that we are going to do that is with a phaser. And what a phaser is, is that it's a ramp going from zero to one over a certain period of time. And you define the period of time by 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 giving it a frequency. Now we know we know that we want this phaser to go from zero to one over the length of our buffer. And since our buffer is four seconds long, we need to do the math to get the length of our buffer, or to get the frequency of our phaser. Now the formula for free for 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 frequency is one over time. So we need to first get the time of our buffer. And we do that by saying dim delay. Since I know that I'm going to use this dimension of the date a lot, I'm just going to put a common send for it. I'm going to call it dim so I can refer to it multiple times. Great. So now let's receive the delay. So let's receive the dimensions. And since it's one over the time, um, we need to get the time of this delay. But since gen works in samples, we need to get it into milliseconds. So we're going to use the SAMPS to MS operator. So now this is giving it in milliseconds. But since the formula is in seconds, we need to convert this into seconds. So we're going to say divide by 1000. So now this is going to output 4. And since it's 1 over um, the time, we're going to use a divide. And we're going to use a constant 1 over here. And if you've done everything right, when I debug this by using an output over here, I should get 0 0.25. Let's verify that with the number tilde. And that's right. So now our phaser is going from 0 to 1 over the time of our buffer. But our buffer length is not 1. It is whatever it is in samples, which I'm not sure what it is. You can find out if you do this, that big number. Since I don't really care about that, all I need to do is multiply this by the length of our buffer. So as soon as I do this, it's going to count from zero to the length of our buffer. So we are reading, so we are writing to our buffer, but we need to read back on, but we need to read back on this buffer. And you do that by saying peak, and we give the same name, delay. 
and what we're going to do is over here we're reading back from the delay from the buffer but we need to know where to read back from so again you'll see here it says sample index to read now since you want to read it a certain milliseconds after it's been written we're going to subtract the time from our main phaser so this is going to be our delay time I'm, I'm just going to instantiate another input and say comment delay time but since this delay time is going to be in milliseconds i need to convert it into samples so i'm going to say ms to samps and i want some slide in it so i'm going to slide it over one second great so now if we debug this and I put a certain value, you'll see that it's counting, but it goes into negative values. And we cannot read from a negative value in, 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 in a buffer because it doesn't exist. So to change that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to wrap it around. So I'm gonna say wrap, and wrap takes the lower bound and the higher bound. So we want our lower bound to be zero, and we want our higher bound to be the dimension of our buffer, the length of our buffer. So now it's always gonna read in positive values, and there you go. That is, so now we're reading back our buffer after a certain amount of time. So now if you just do a quick test, if I bring up a live.king, and, and easy DAC, if I've done everything right, you should hear one echo. Let's just use a clap. There you go. Oh, you don't hear it because I need to mix this signal with our delayed signal. So we hear both of them. So I'm going to do a send OG signal. This is being sent. And I need to do a receive over here. I'm going to mix it in equal power. So I'm going to say mix 0.5. There you go. So if I give it 339, you're gonna hear it quicker. Great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some feedback. And the way, you Im the way you implement feedback is that you take the delayed signal and you feed it back into poke, which is gonna write it again. And the way you do that is you can simply just connect it, but that's gonna, um, Cause some is, but that's going to cause some is going to cause some issues to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by a certain amount, so we don't kill our ears. And I'm going to declare a parameter over here so I can control that externally. Say param fb. I'm going to initialize it to zero point eight. That's a good amount of feedback that we're going to get. And I just call it back over here. I just say multiply by feedback. I'm going to do some housekeeping. I'm going to build a simple filter. So this is going to filter each consecutive repeat. And I'm going to use a DC block. So we don't get any DC offsets. Then I'm going to put it into our feedback. A multiplication for, for feedback and we'll use a clip from minus one to one so that nothing breaks our speakers if we do something wrong and essentially that is how you create a delay line
and if you want to change the amount of feedback that you have you can just use a live dot dial let's uh, use an amount prototype so this goes from 0 to 100 but you want this to go from 0 to 1 so we divide it by 100 and since we gave our parameter name fb we say prepend fb and I put this in here I cannot control the amount of feedback that we get this is maximum feedback and that's essentially how we create a delay line in max from scratch if you don't want to do all, all this you always have the delay or, or operator uh, which you give the um, length of the delay that you want so i'm going to say sample rate into four i'm going to say at the rate feedback one this is basically what we just created you can obviously use this but it's fun to know how to create your own delay lines yep that's about it have fun